What's your favorite movie? Shout it out. Okay, lots of different answers. Great. Mine's Captain America Civil War. Well, I actually wanted to ask some of my friends. What's your favorite movie? Spaceballs. Pitch Perfect. Tangled. With what? 10 Things I Hate About You. 51st Days with Adam Sandler. <laughs> it's Spider-Man Far From Home. Top Gun. Ratatouille. I know that was pretty fast. So <laughs> here's the list. They're all pretty good movies, right? But think about it. Off the top of your head, do you know who the director of any of these movies are? Maybe not. So if you don't know these people, it's totally OK. But I want you to try to notice something. In particular, look at their photos. What do all of these directors have in common? Say it with me now. They are all white men. Yeah. Well, a little bit about me. From a young age, I've always been interested in performing. And when I was young, I wanted to be an actor. That was until about sixth grade when I watched Gallery Star Wars Mandalorian. It's a super interesting show about the creative process, and after watching it, I decided I wanted to be a film director. Of course, not knowing at the time, it's quite literally the hardest one to succeed in, but that's not the point. <laughs> Searching director Anish Shinakti once said, growing up, watching my favorite films, those films never had people who looked like me in them. While films about race and culture are obviously important, what's really important to focus representation in are the everyday films, i.e. superhero, action adventure, horror, you name it. These films have historically lacked representation and diversity on all fronts. But particularly, film directing is one of the least diverse aspects of the industry and affects diversity in film overall. And this is why we need to diversify directing. If you watched the 2020 Oscars, you probably remember the discussions hap that happened surrounding diversity when the nominations first came out. Well, this conversation actually began in 2016 when the hashtag OscarsSoWhite began trending on Twitter. While the Oscars have worked to rectify their failings since the blatant callout, the one category that is still lacking is the Best Director category. So currently, the awards have been running for 93 years, and in that time, 400 directors have been nominated. Out of those 400, seven have been women and six have been black men. The statistic looks like this. You know, stories are essential to society and culture, so it can be problematic when we get them from only one perspective. Because of this narrow view, there are many people and cultures who are underrepresented or represented in a harmful way. It's crazy to think about, isn't it? An industry viewed as progressive is in fact not very progressive at all. Directors have a hand in almost every part of the creative process, and so it makes sense that they have a huge effect on overall cast diversity. It's been shown that directors of color often have movies with more diverse casts than those movies directed by white men. One director who has recently gotten a lot of backlash for casting only white actors is Tim Burton. While his films are fan-loved and critically acclaimed, after Samuel L. Jackson's comments, fans started looking deeper and expressing their concerns via Twitter. When asked to comment on diversity, Tim Burton said, things either call for things or they don't, basically dismissing the question altogether. But what happens when people other than white men control the narrative? Well, we've seen the positive effects recently through movies such as Shang-Chi, Black Panther, and most recently, Everything Everywhere All at Once, which just won seven Oscars, including Best Director. You should go watch it. These films have made important and impactful strides, but an entire industry doesn't change with just three movies. Currently, women control around one-third of the personal finances in the US, 11 trillion, give or take. By 2030, which is surprisingly closer than you think it is, women are expected to control $30 trillion of personal finances within the US. This means that women will be funding more things, i.e. movies. Women will want, to see, will want to invest in things they can see themselves represented in, so no longer should the market cater to the white male point of view. Because of this, diversity will be favorable for both personal and professional reasons. So why not? Let's take this bigger. Why does film matter? Why should we care? Both valid questions. I have two words, unconscious bias. Unconscious bias is a form of social stereotyping developed by our brains, oftentimes without our knowledge. One thing that can perpetuate harmful unconscious bias is film. This is because film is easily digestible by all types of learners. Auditory learners, visual learners, and kinesthetic learners can all easily grasp the concepts shown on film, meaning the morals quite literally become ingrained in our minds. 
film affects our thoughts, our opinions, our decisions. So we need to care about it, even if we don't want to. Now, hopefully, what you're asking yourself at this point is, well, what can I do? That's a great question. As shown through the Oscars, when people speak up, things change. So speak up, either via through social media or, in a way that's more interesting in my opinion, watching movies with diverse directors. Now, you may not know where to start, so I've compiled a list of movies directed by women and people of color that I hope you check out when you get the chance. And, you know, maybe the next time you go to see a movie, ask yourself, who's the director? Thank you.